is that both teams play a similar style where they encourage a lot of fair checking and you know, possessions. And uh, I thought the first period we were good, and then the second period we all controlled the play, and then I thought the third, it became a different game because we scored so early in the period. You know, they're desperate to get back on the board and we're desperate to keep the puck out of our zone. And I thought in some ways it came it became like a game of tennis and I thought they did a good job managing that. And uh, Clay Wood did a nice job in his first game. Did you think that hit on Quiller was kind of the turning point of the game in terms of physicality? It seems like the penalties kind of started rolling in after that. Well, I, I thought the, uh, there was a number of penalties in that stretch there and I thought that um, changed the complexion of the game. Um, I actually thought they got more steam out of that than we did, and because um, we took some some penalties right after that. But um, so it was a it was a funny game. I think you know both of us have been off for a while. You know we you're playing back to back games. They played in a big sheet in New Hampshire. We played in a big sheet in UMass. Playing in a big sheet's a different game. It's a little more taxing for your legs. And it was, you know, that had a, you know, ended up being kind of a grinding game. I know both teams have good transitional games, but it wasn't that consistent the whole night. Excuse me. You want to back up? Um, you know what? He he's got to play. You know, I'm a kind of a one goalie coach. I, I I rode Brad for three years, and obviously Chris last year, and um, I thought that. Uh, Clay has to get some games. It's, it's a situation where he and Brian Mountain are both good goalies. Um, you know, Brian got a few last year. And um, I just wanted to see what Clay would do in this environment. I think Brian got a game last year against Merrimack. And um, I thought he did a good job. Coach, like both teams kind of struggled with power play tonight. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I was actually, all year, I've been, well, I shouldn't say all year, but after about the first six games, I was really excited about our power play. It brought a lot of offensive energy to our team and our bench. And holy smokes! Every time we got one, I was I was biting my nails because they kept getting better chances than the power play did. You know, we'd get we'd get a good power play chance. They'd come down like a two on one, and I think credit has to go to both penalty killing units. I know their penalty killing is really good, and I was just you know I had a flip last night with a goal against, but it was much better over the last five games. So. Uh, we had four power plays? Three? Yeah, that's the state right? Yeah. And they only had two power plays. It was, it was weird because you usually get a power play goal a game and there wasn't a power play goal for either team. And both power plays didn't generate any energy either, so it's kind of duds. Coming out of the break, have you seen a lot of positive signs and something that you were looking for out of your team after the hiatus? Well, I, I've been saying for a while it would be nice if we get some secondary scoring. The top line seems to carry most of the scoring, but you know, obviously Brody Reed is coming on. I thought that line with uh, McLaughlin, Reed, and Tangaro is terrific. Um, you know, and I've said this before, the, the pure talent, Daniels and, and uh, Tangaro, I mean, um, Vermish and Quayla should be that most, you know, productive line, but they're just, they're there, but you know, Quayla's going to score a couple tonight, Garrett had a couple looks. Uh, Daniels made a great pass to his brother, and they're there, but just not scoring yet. If we can get them going, we, we can really rely on three lines to do some some uh, offensive damage. What's the next step to getting that line going? Well, you can come in if you'd like on Monday and go through the video session with me and explore what they're doing right now. But I, I don't know, they're not scoring. Um, it's not for lack of effort. You know, Gary scored again, so he's on like a five goal for the three or four games. So it's coming. Um, you know, the biggest guy in that, I think, is Quayle. I mean, we had a couple of coaches that we, that we play who see us on tape, and they said, gee, it's a shame that you know, Quayle hasn't got to the level he was at as a freshman. But I thought tonight he was really visible. Um, I think it, it, it's got to come with him. He has good hands. But you know, he missed one right in the goal mall today. You know, he shot right back to the kids bad. He missed one last night. I think he got that goal. I think he was actually getting the goal. But, um, he's just got to start scoring. I think once you, once a guy scores like Garrett, they start scoring. Talk about the players. It's funny because I was thinking about that yesterday. You know, Brody, he looks really good sometimes. He's always good in the power play. Then he he, says, he tends to drift in the five-on-five five play. 
Jonathan Gower, who's a kid that you don't know what you're going to get out of him, is visible all the time. And it's a question of what he's going to do with his speed and his tenacity and his second and third effort. I thought the last two games, he's like that one player who went through the defenseman's stick and his skates and he dove like Bobby or shot it was a pretty impressive goal. Um, you got to try and cultivate him. I think he's he's been an asset because of his speed. Uh, Pimmer's getting better. I like I like to see Braden be more reliable scoring, not just more reliable. I told him you're eating up minutes right now, but you got to start scoring some points. Ferrio I thought was good tonight. He's a young kid. Um, he's got that shot. And he's had a good game last night. I felt and a good one tonight. You know, it's a, it's a really good question. I don't know who I'm missing because we got a bunch of them. But the D are good. The D are fine. The D are all good. Jamie had a rough night tonight. And he, he's a young kid and he gets down on himself too easily. But he had a rough night. He's going to be a hell of a player. And Ivor and Potato are really good. So. Um, and Clint Clay Whitney is good. There's another one. But I, I think. Uh, I think one, one or two of them has got to become more reliable and be there every night. Maybe not scoring goals and points, but generating scoring chances and doing those things that give you some of that offensive confidence. Any final thoughts on the first, your first four-point weekend of the year? Got the long this weekend. Any thoughts on the ascent of the hockey season? Well, with, you know, we're trying to climb, obviously. That was a huge, huge game tonight because then it kind of gives you a little bit more tightness to the pack. You know, Merrimack, you know, Merrimack beat Mays from Mays ahead of us, Merrimack's ahead of them. And there's a, and there's a pack there of schools that we've got to get up with. Uh, you know, what it does, it triggers like, okay, we can use some blue points here, we blue points here. We talked about that, so many games, one goal losses, but nothing we can do. we got to look forward, keep pushing forward. We all remember last year, we had a pretty good run there in, uh, in a stretch from like mid-January until uh, basically the end of February when we uh, lost those games to UNH. And, you and you just I think there's a good group of guys just one step at a time I think you know the question about the freshmen they're going to get better you know it's nice to have a backup goalie that can give Chris some relief so you just got to go and do it now I'm just going sorry going off of that you guys this is the first time you put back back to back points together what does that say for you? you do you feel like you're getting through these guys a little bit more as early in the season it was a little frustrating I think it's a combination of things. I think the, uh, and I've said this before, I think if I'm doing it, I'll be able to score like in Edmond the last like five or six games. We'd have more wins, you know. I'll probably, well, one of those games, we'd have great games and we couldn't get any power play goals. It was like tonight's game. I thought tonight we had some really good luck and we just didn't score. But um, that's, that to me is going to carry us the power play goals on the special teams. And I don't, I can't pick apart the rest of the, you know, the, the game in terms of strategy and systems. But for me, the catalyst for our success is usually up on us. We work on it a lot. We've got to continue to rely on it. Oh. One more question for you. Um, talking a little bit about that controversial goal, I know that you guys didn't have a whole lot to say about it. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you agree with it? You know what's weird? I, I don't know if I, I don't know if you're fine with saying this, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. The, um... The shot was taken from the left of the goal. And I don't know if you guys heard the claim. Was it a claim? And you know, what happened was, from our angle, which is above their bench, the guy shot the puck up and it hit, it hit the outside of the netting. The netting was so loose, it then went up and hit the top shelf of the net, which then kicked the water ball. Okay? That's what I saw. I didn't see it from the bench. I heard the clang. Everybody on the bench the clang. So then he looked at the replay and I said, Scott, how did that go in? He goes, oh, it was shot from here and I saw it going in. He said, okay, I'm not going to argue. He's looking at the video. So then I went out and asked him afterwards. He said, what, what exactly did you see? What angle? He said, we saw the overhead angle. Under the crossbar, off the water, bottom and down. I said, well, if you saw my angle, you wouldn't have allowed the goal. Clay was there, Clay's there now. I thought the whistle. Everyone else said the whistle was blown. The whistle, the whistle blown. blew before the light went off. Yeah, and the whistle was blown, and he said the whistle was blown because it went in the net, and he wanted the play to stop. I don't know, stop it.